Hey guys, today I am going to tell you the sad story of the Cordling and how he became persona non grata from the Magic the Gathering community. And to be quite frank, it's always very interesting to study psychology, right? Uh, psychology is so fascinating in a small community. And we do have a very small community. The a uh, mass majority of them are not vocal. They're not going to scream and yell on Twitter, but they do have, you know, uh, the most vocal minority does control Magic the Gathering far more than in other communities, I, I believe, that I've been part of at least. So in a Magic the Gathering community, you have uh, predators, you have unethical people, you have people who cheat, you have people who steal, I mean, this isn't even in the global sense. This is at your local FNM. Um, there used to be this a guy who would steal magic cards. I know, really weird. And he, his friend would help him. You would be playing the friend, and then he would ask to do a deal with you. And you never should trade while you're playing a game of magic because you're not concentrating on your binder. And that's what happened. Uh, and of course, we have the MTG finance community. What do you value this at? What do you value this at? Trying to catch you slipping on a value, maybe a value recently changed and you did not know this card spiked up in price. Well, trust me, this other dude who's asking you, what do you value this at? He will know the card price that spiked up uh, and he's going to take the card away from you and he won't tell you what the card is worth, right? Because you've already assigned a low value for it. So there are a lot of really, uh, I would say, villains in Magic the Gathering. Um, I would say there are a lot of people who are not nice people, and some of them are even criminals. Um, Conley is going through his criminal proceedings as we speak, and some of them are cheaters, um, like Alex. And when you confront them and say, hey, Alex, you've been banned one time. How does it feel? Oh, do you miss me? And that's the culture of magic. No one ever feels guilty for what they did. Remember Alex wrote that long apology the second time he got banned. And then immediately afterwards, he talked to the judges to tell them how to cheat, supposedly. And then he was at the local FNM and he got caught cheating yet again. And then that's how he got banned for life. I would say Alex makes a very good villain. But it disgraces the game that Alex has won so much, that he did so well in GP Los Angeles, that he has done so well. So Wizard of Coast is not going to make Alex a villain because that makes them look like idiots. Wizard of Coast is not going to make a predator a villain because that makes, you know, they still have to sell the product to kids. That's not great to, for little kids to know that, hey, we employ, uh, we... Uh, outsourced to uh, this Noah Bradley character, and he's the greatest <laughs> predator of them all. Openly. Uh, doesn't care. You know, openly say, hey, I'm a predator, guys. Hello. And people wizard close, clap, 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 clap. Thank you, Noah. Why don't we use your artwork until forever? Um, so essentially, the Quarterling of all people was chosen as the main villain for Magic the Gathering players by one individual in particular, Gavin Vihe, but I would argue by a lot more individuals because um, let's be uh, completely frank here. Let's be 100. When you do something like, um, when you're choosing a villain, you don't want that villain to make less the hero. You want that villain to be a good foil. So Superman still has to be Superman. Now we chose a Clock Kent that was a predator, that would not be great. We would be like, oh, that was not great. We need to choose a villain that is, you know, not disgracing the game. Because if we choose a predator or a cheater or someone who steals or someone who is unethical, that makes our game look bad. We, in fact, want to promote these individuals for whatever reason, um, because that I don't know if that makes our game looks good, but at the very least, we get to kind of hide the predators underneath the bed. Of uh, maybe a young aspiring artist. We throw Noah Bradley underneath the bed and hope for the best. 
So when you talk about the Quarterling and how he became this great villain in Magic the Gathering lore, and really I, I think this is much more interesting lore than anything else you could be... Uh, maybe some of you clicked this video thinking it was a lore piece. There is no lore in Magic the Gathering. I can't remember last time they wrote an article or something about that. But regardless, here's what I'm going to go ahead and tell you about um, Anjali Media, the quarterling. He's not a bad guy, Jeremy. He's not a bad guy. So it just boggles my mind that like, out of all the people we could have picked and all the you know, opportunities and all the predators, all the... Um, somehow they picked him. I mean, they could have picked Yuya Watanabe, clearly a cheater, got caught, didn't care. Um, they could have picked Noah Bradley. And even back then, so maybe you say, oh, they had to pick someone at that time period, which is not true. They could have picked someone. They could have picked Alex. I really do not know why they did not pick Alex, because Alex was a super easy pick. Like, Alex was an incredibly easy pick for them to say, hey, you know, this is the guy who has dishonored our game. He's cheated and defrauded all of these other Magic players in a tournament setting. He stole from them because these Magic players are paying money, right? They're paying money to enter a tournament where there is a split prize pool dependent on how many people are entering. So I don't care how you put it, they're paying money, okay? And the money is being stolen. So I don't know why Alex was so beloved. And truly he was. I mean, you have to understand this. If you get banned from life one time and you come back, it's because you're loved, right? People like you. Otherwise, why would you come back? And especially with the attitude you came back with. Did you miss me? Did you do it? Like, this guy was a villain for sure. Did the Wizard Coast ban him for life from the very get-go? No. They banned him for a little bit of time. He came back. He cheated again. Got banned a second time. Then supposedly reformed. And he said that, now I apologize. He wrote a long apology. And a week later, he was caught cheating again. And banned for life. Like, wouldn't this dude be the villain? Of Matt? Like, why... Jeremy, why Jeremy? Why the quarterling? And that's the interesting psychology part that I am exploring in this video. I think when you pick a cheater as your villain, you're saying that there's a lot of cheaters in this game. So you're admitting that this game is people are winning large sums of money illegally, I would argue even criminally, um, over a children's card game to and then you would that would be bad maybe there's some legal proceedings against you maybe the tournament well it is gambling when everyone puts in 80 dollars to enter a tournament where a cash prize and someone cheats well in poker the very least thing you'd be going is going to jail that's the very least now who knows how many fingers you have when you go to jail but nonetheless I mean, imagine, like, cheating on Alex's level as consistently, as frequently in a poker game. Like, who would accept this? Or imagine cheating at anything in life, right? To the extent Alex did. And yet, he's not the villain. He's at most a, you know, humorous character in this story. Because it makes Wizard of the Coast look bad. Now, if they picked a predator, that would make Wizard of the Coast look even worse. Right? But go, oh, hey, I didn't know we had predators in the game. Thank you for telling me so I can tell my kids not to play this game. They picked the one individual they could pick on. And that is very scary. That should scare you. The reason that should scare you should be pretty obvious. Because um, next time it could be you. The next time... It could be you. And that's why I think it's interesting to cover this. Because how does Wizard of the Coast pick who they want to go after? How does Gavin one day wake up and say, hey, you know, even though it was... So Gavin, in this case, he should be mad at the marketing team. 
why is he mad at Jeremy? Even if he hates Jeremy, he dislikes Jeremy, and he just wants the worst to happen to Jeremy, which he does, why publicly attack your customer for a mistake that the marketing agency you hired made? You could have said, hey, marketing agency, you should have done more research because this person, or you should have told us, you should have um, asked. I mean, it wasn't Jeremy's fault he got the card to spoil. It was the marketing agency's fault, and it was Gavin's fault for not telling the marketing agency to avoid a certain list of people. So that's the environment we currently live under uh, for Wizard of the Coast. We live under this um, where the Wizard of the Coast employees, they're the ones deciding who gets banned. I mean, the whole uh, Trap T. Wu and uh, Magic for War situation, exactly the same thing got played out. A Wizard of the Coast employee, Emma, got offended and she wanted everyone in this group banned and they got banned. Now, you might ask, why is this Emma individual joining a private group about memes? Specifically to ban these people. It sucks. But that's the, uh, I mean, Wizard of the Coast employees come after me all the time. But they're mostly too stupid to realize what's going on. And, you know, I can always sue them. That's why I have not been banned yet. I've done things that they probably don't like. But I would sue them personally, and I would sue their company. And I know they're lawyers. They're not anything. I mean, yeah, the outsource, but their legal counsel is not anything special. My guys. <laughs>